Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to a supplemental episode of iHeartGeek Movie Night. Um, yeah, we got a different panel here today. I'm a little confused. This is this is uh, this is a panel we've never actually had on the mic before. So let let's go into our introductions before I go into our night i guess okay first off i'm dub and i'm your producer and i do that kind of stuff and to my left we have my good buddy blaze hey you guys how you doing uh we saw it's i a saw a movie night. for the first time today and i'm i'm happy to talk about it it's nice. exciting and we get a voice that we so rarely get to hear on the show we get well so kaj gets to do the bragging thing all the time now i get a brag hello jen how are you doing i am good and you just fine. How many times have you seen this movie that we've watched tonight? I can't count. <laughs> I How love many the, times? the excitement you have in your voice for that. That's great. <laughs> you know, and when your husband has a favorite movie, you see it. That happens a little bit. <laughs> and to my right, we have uh, the, uh, the, the host of Piecing It Together podcast, Dave Rosen. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing all right. I'm happy to be here. Wow, it's it's weird seeing you talk as cause I've been listening to your show for a yeah. while. So he's seeing you talk I, a little different. I yeah, I'm 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 here. I'm a real person. You, I, 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 I thought I, you were I, like I Siri. exist. I exist. So you're not Siri. So you. I'm I'm kind of Siri. But. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we call it now? <laughs> okay. So today we watched L.A. Story, which was from 1991. Steve Martin, I think, at his best. I I don't know if anybody wanted to uh, want to disagree with that. I'm not going to disagree with it. Okay. I mean, he he he's great in it. Mm -hmm. Um he certainly has some of his other classics are amazing as well. I mean, I don't know, I don't know his best best, but definitely up there. Yeah. He's still in his prime, that's for sure. Oh yeah, that's Yes. Yeah. Um I think this is when he was able to get away with just about anything. Yes. Yeah, because the jerk, I don't think he was able to get away with as much as we think he could get away with. Mm. This one, literally, they said, well, you know what, you can do whatever you want, Steve. Yeah. You're that big of a star at this point. So, generally, this is, to you. This is uh, blah, blah, blah. Why can I not say your name today? <laughs> it's a little late. I it. <laughs> it's really late for me, anyway. <laughs> it's Blyze and Dave's first time of watching L.A. Story. So... Um, let's get your first kind of thoughts on it. Uh, it was very 90s. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it was made to be 90s, yeah, no, too, though. Yeah, for sure. It was um, definitely um, hit a, a time genre there. and uh, But it was good. It was it was um, well-paced, and I had a, real lot, a good time watching it. It was a lot of fun. Okay. Dave, what was your first? What's your first impressions of it? Well, first of all, I may have seen it when I was a kid, but I don't remember anything from this long ago, and so let's just say it is the first okay, time. Fair enough. But uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. It was very '90s. It was also very spoofy, um, which spoofs were one of my favorite kind mm -hmm. of genres of film, and they just don't happen anymore because they got all just awful, you know, over oh. the last like. Well, not last 10 years, because they really don't make them anymore, but like in the early 2000s and even the late 90s, they got terrible, and so they basically just died off, and so it's good to go back and see another spoof that actually works. But you know? so from from what um, kind of the spoof genre, how it kind of died, Yeah, it, you know, when we, they have the 7 million sequels and all that, Yeah, this actually still worked even if you hadn't experienced yeah. anything, the spoof. Because it, it's, I don't know, it's like... There was a certain kind of, uh, I don't know, like a freedom to spoof things and just mm -hmm. be completely ridiculous back oh, then? Oh, you were able to be completely and totally politically incorrect sure, in this movie. that too. You know, without it being in your face, I guess? Because there was nothing political about this movie. No. Absolutely nothing. But at the same time, this movie could not be made today. Yeah. I don't think, <laughs> in its current form anyway. Yeah, I, I don't know. It would be weird to see something like this made today. I, I mean... Some of the jokes, I think, would just go over people's heads, and then there's also just, I mean, just the, the pacing and the structure of it, mm -hmm. I just don't think. Well, it's it's, it's kind of slow. You know, I, I never noticed it till tonight. I'm like, hmm. Especially, because I'm, I'm watching you two watch it, because I'm like, okay, so what do you think is it funny? Yeah. I'm like, well, this is kind of slow. But at the same time, I think that 
you get a payoff every time. Sure. And you have to be yeah. pretty you have to have a certain level of intelligence to watch it. You have to have read Shakespeare to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean how many how many Shakespeare references did we get in that? Good amount. Yeah, there's, there's a few. <laughs> yeah. More than was it when I was expecting going into the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, um So a question I asked before and I'm gonna ask it again now that you guys had a second to think about it. When I first saw this movie, I called this a love letter to L.A. and because that's what I heard Steve Martin call it. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds really good. But then again, watching it, he was also married to the um, Victoria Tennant, who was the who was the lead in this movie at the time, and they were in love. Blah 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 blah. Is this a love letter to L.A. or is this a love letter to her? Uh, I think um, I think my answer kind of is the same. It, it's I think it's to both. You mm-hmm. can definitely feel the. Um, like the the real love between them during the the entire oh they had the movie. a great chemistry and it just um it just really feels like it hit L A right like a nail mm-hmm. in the head for um for that time period and it just was uh, just really going for it and you can tell that he loves the city like and um just knows how to really live in that city like there's a whole scene where he just gets in his car and he kind of drives past all the traffic Mm -hmm. because oh that scene is so good he just that's just the way he lives his life and i think that shows you like how he really lived his life like Mm -hmm. he just he knew the town and he he loved the town interesting jen what about you you've been kind of quiet over there I think it's more a love letter to her, mm-hmm. but it's celebrating the the area, the the place they were together. So it's not necessarily a love letter to the city itself, but he's showing how he enjoyed life mm-hmm. and how um, the s- space and time with her was enjoyed for that. So L.A. Time. is basically the third person in their relationship. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm putting words in your mouth, I know, but <laughs> we've been married long enough, I guess I can do that at this point. <laughs> what about you, David? Um, so I guess I don't know enough about their real life marriage mm-hmm. to like well, say. But if, if you if, put it on just this, yeah, just the movie level, yeah. I but I think I think mostly I saw it as a, a love letter to uh, that specific moment in LA history mm-hmm. because I mean it it captures the early '90s of Los Angeles just so oh. crazy well. And I mean, not that I grew up there or anything, but but like, you get every, it. Yeah, I get it. Every every thought and memory that i have mm-hmm. of that era is in there you know well let's, let's hit some of these these big things that you know you know from la like the he he needed to go up what 15 yards so he gets in his car and drives up 15 <laughs> yards to go to his, his neighbor's house who is the next house over you get in your car and you drive yeah and you run out of gas later and so you you uh, actually kick the car over because you got to <laughs> drive everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is a fun one. Um, another one that I thought was interesting that it made sense at the time, um, but the, I guess people's mindsets have changed. That the um, I guess hyper attention to opening up whoever he was dating's door. Sure, because I mean that's I mean the way they they, they made it a huge joke because you know he'd have to get out, go around. Get her in, put her back into his her her into the driver's seat. It was really interesting, um, just like that L.A. kind of mentality was. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't think that exists anymore. <laughs> I think uh, restaurants are another big thing. Oh, like just dealing man. dealing with the restaurants, idiots. the maitre d's, the <laughs> the the the, the, uh, the the menus and the uh-huh. prices yeah. and all that. I mean, that's all huge. Oh yeah, the uh, I, I like the. I think we saw this in Pulp Fiction, too, when they had the computer screen, and it points out, okay, this person is worth this much money. Their last movie was worth (laughs) 17. This is when we had our Chevy Chase (laughs) cameo. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of cameos. I loved the exaggeration that they had about his you know his finances to uh-huh. get the reservation yeah. to go to the place and the go to the, the bank yeah the mm-hmm. bank and all of that that goes with it where do Just, you summer right <laughs> where do you summer yeah uh, the, uh one of the ones i thought was really good was the um when they were ordering the coffee 
Oh yeah, yeah with yeah. the twist. <laughs> yeah, that twist, right. decaf, double decaf, twist, decaf, yes. decaf, 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 <laughs> double decaf. <laughs> that whole scene, like the entire dinner with all the people all at one or lunch, I guess. Uh, that was probably my favorite part of the movie. Yeah. Like that, mm-hmm. just entire exchange from beginning to end was mm-hmm. great. So many great moments in there. Well, from what I understand, that was the first. Um, scene that was written in the movie oh yeah so the whole movie was based around that scene yeah that makes sense because he said the producer said this is every single lunch i've had in la (laughs) yeah ever now um something else i found interesting that i dug up it turns out that in that scene when um i forgot her name in the movie but victoria Tennant um sits down and she starts pulling everything out of her purse Mm -hmm. that was a bob dylan Thing. Yeah, you were saying something about that. Which, so. which I thought was interesting because it's. Um, I was just watching Rolling Thunder. It's the second time I've heard him talk about it. Yeah. Um, but I heard before that Bob Dylan said something to Steve Martin about that. I'm like, interesting. Because Bob Dylan, he could never love a woman that didn't have like a full box of just random things everywhere that she <laughs> went. I'm like, huh. I thought that was, so. Bob Dylan inspired L.A. story. Yeah, I get. I guess if Dylan says something to you at some point, you work it into whatever. You it is will work it into everything yeah. forever. <laughs> <laughs> and the the uh, soundtrack I think is absolutely beautiful. It definitely was not '90s, mm-hmm. but there's yeah. a lot of Enya. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> y'all remember Enya? Sure. But that was a. Um, it's just the great the, that feel whenever they did all the high art. For the sake of art, I want to say. Um, stuff, they had that great backing area. Now, I, actually, I want to talk about that the high art thing. Do you feel like it was too artsy-fartsy in times? Was this Is this Steve Martin overindulging himself? Is he making fun of the artsy-fartsy? Is, he, is it trying to be that? Is it? I think he's definitely trying to make fun of the artsy-fartsy. Mm-hmm. And I think that's still something that people make fun of in movies and television. Yeah. Like, you know, where, where there's some art piece or an art gallery showing and it's just nonsense. I can't remember what it was, but there was something recently where there was just like a pile of sticks. And then it like turned out that that's all it was, was a pile of sticks. It wasn't actually an art <laughs> exhibit, you know. It's like and the like, red balloon. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's just another one of those things where... Um, like you were saying earlier with the spoofing it, yeah. is, it works really well um and the difference i think is between this and what spoofing is now is they did it without like bringing it to the focus mm-hmm. you spoofed it but it was part of the movie and it f- it flowed really well as opposed to now where if it's a, a spoof movie it's a spoof movie and yeah. that's, that's actually, all it is that's yes. a good way of putting that i didn't actually put that together yeah. as, oh well then they're just spoofing it but you said it's a spoof movie, but it doesn't feel like a spoof movie because it's so serious, too. Sure. Because I don't think spoof... I, and I don't know because I was really young, but when this came out, I don't think spoof movies were a genre. It, uh, you had spoofing within ni- movies. This is 91. Sp- well, we would have had Naked Gun at that point. And Did we? I, I want to say Naked Gun is 87? It's when we can still like OJ. Yes, right. So. so you were talking about um, the art of it, and um, I loved the reference that they did when he was roller skating in the art gallery, and he said, my best friend calls this wasting time. So it's just like mm-hmm. a reference to all of the art and all of the high art that happens yeah. and how it's just a waste of time or a waste of space kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys noticed on the scene when Steve Martin's talking uh, about the weird art piece that's just a blob. You look to the right and his friend is busting up laughing. Yeah, <laughs> The whole scene was improv and that that's just this the brilliance of Steve Martin, really. Oh yeah, that must have been so hard to keep a straight oh face gosh. while he's doing that. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure there was so many takes that were even worse than that. That's why they kept that one. Because <laughs> yeah. like this is the the least of the, <laughs> oh, <laughs> of the laughter bet. that was going on. And then not only that, that was profane. What he was saying, You're like, whoo! I wonder how much worse he got. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah, but I mean, he's not a comedian that really works blue but i think he pre- can probably get there pretty bad mm-hmm. especially when you know i think 
like we were talking about with the jerk, I think that he had carte blanche on this. That there wasn't anybody that would say, "No, I think you're going too far in this," because you're Steve Martin, and who's going to say that to him at this point in his career? Yeah. Yeah, let the funny man be the funny man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did he go straight from this to like all the family comedies next? Like um, he Father went to his dramas. Oh, okay. But this was um, what was it like the the one that he adopts the little girl and mm. then all the like indie looking ones, sure. and, you know, mixed nuts and mm-hmm. really bad ones, yeah. mall shop girl. Oh yeah, yeah. And then he went to the father. Yeah, shop girl's all right though. Mm. That's okay. So <laughs> now I know that on on your show you do kind of a link from one movie to another movie. Where would you pe- what would you piece together on this? I know you didn't really have time to think about it. But. Sure. Well, I mean, this being you know an older movie, ninety one. Um, I I can't really speak too much to what movies would have inspired it previously. But like, mm-hmm. if we were doing one of our backwards breaking it apart episodes where we look at things that were inspired by it, um, I was actually thinking while we were watching it. I think uh, the Tina Fey things like Thirty Rock and Unbreakable Kimmy oh, Schmidt yeah. both really use this kind of just anything goes just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks and yeah. some jokes land some don't but it's just constant things happening and mm-hmm. some of the jokes are even in the background and like aren't even a focus like uh the beginning of the uh, atm scene like it hadn't even started yet and there's already people getting robbed outside oh, of the atm yeah. there you was know a line i'm bob i'll be your robber the people <laughs> online. Yeah. that was like great. just throwing constant jokes in there um i think that that those shows really, you know, probably got a lot of influence from that. And I'd imagine also the Saturday Night Live influence of Steve oh, Martin rubs gosh. off on yeah. Tina Fey as well. Yeah. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so what did you think of the Sarah Jessica Parker character? You know, when I, I got to say this before we all get started. When I was younger, I thought that she was just the hottest character. I'm like, oh my gosh, why is he going for that old English chick when he could be with her? <laughs> Wearing... 90s spandex uh, <laughs> and a bad neon bra uh, so but now my opinion has changed a little bit what mm-hmm. was your thoughts on her because we're a little older now and we can kind of look at it a little differently what was your opinion on her character i want a nap <laughs> <laughs> yeah very exhausting <laughs> totally the jumping on, on constantly oh, yeah. oh, oh so what do you think jen the conversation in the car alone, the comparison <laughs> between her and him and then the other two characters and the conversation between the two cars, she's too much energy, too much, I don't know. 21 years old. Oh, yeah. She's oh, definitely, yeah. I, I mean, maybe not the maturity level of a 21-year-old, but the energy is definitely a teenager. <laughs> I will say, though, from a performance standpoint, oh, I, I could see why people like fell in love with her and she ended up you know going on to do so much well stuff, this was you know? her second big appearance yeah first one being girls just want to have fun this was her second big one yeah so yeah. i mean that's a, well, square pegs but yeah, yeah that, that's a big impression i think oh yeah movie like well this. she she made the um the movie poster because mm. she hit right after this movie came out yeah wow with um Oh, all well, that other stuff she was in. Yeah. <laughs> it was before Sex in the City, but she, she'd been doing a lot of stuff then. Sure. Yeah. Great character. Um, yeah. Mary Lou Henner, did you hate her? Did you love her? Was she justified as a character? Which one was That's she? That's his first girlfriend. Oh, yeah. She she was she was good. Um, she was an she old, definitely married, old was, married hero couple. Yes, yeah, she was definitely... Um, she made you feel like you didn't like that character, even right off the bat, mm-hmm. with um, with the whole thing with her getting ready. And mm-hmm. he's like, "I get up, and then I wait, and then I realize you're not ready." And mm-hmm. then, yeah, so that was <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, but with with that, you also look at her friends and her friends of friends that they go to the restaurant with. They're all the exact yeah. same. Mm-hmm. So you can't really blame her as a person. That that's societal at yeah. that point. I'm I guess. Sure. Sure. Because everybody, I, she's not doing it to be a butthole, uh, you know, other than cheating on him for the last three years with his <laughs> manager. <laughs> so I showed you guys the a couple of the deleted scenes. What did you do? You think those should have been left in? Let Let's start with the boxer scenes. I thought that added so much, and I think if it was cutting for the sake of cutting, 
Yeah, I think it's just strictly for time. I mean, anything could have fit in this movie because it's got that kind of anything goes, yeah, non sequitur kind of, uh, you know, style. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, I mean, I think they just probably wanted to just keep it trim, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the cuts make sense. Because like you said, there was, there was parts where you could feel the movie going on a little bit more. And mm-hmm. I, um, I don't think I could imagine too much more being in the movie now with him breaking the fourth wall though that was so perfect why is this story so much interesting so much more interesting than mine I'm like oh that that's why i wanted that left in and you, you it was funny because you noticed i'm like wait there's a guy in the background what yeah. is that and i'm like <laughs> no that's the scene they cut mm-hmm. uh, did he break a fourth wall yes. during the actual movie uh or it, just in the deleted scene? in the deleted scene but no, but was Not there a the point? Actual, no. So there was no point where he actually mm-hmm. broke the fourth wall, and so I guess that kind of makes sense too why they would cut. That. Well, but I mean, basically the signposts are talking to you as uh, breaking the fourth wall the sure. whole time. Yeah, that's true. Well, there's also one moment that was possibly my favorite gag of the movie that mm-hmm. it's not really breaking the fourth wall but it's when you see Sarah Jessica Parker outside the store and then she runs in to grab his pants and he wants to like check his hair and mm-hmm. he looks in the camera and goes like, oh. this, as if there's a mirror yeah, there yeah, you're right yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. kind of that that's breaking uh-huh. the fourth wall yeah. you know <laughs> and that part was hilarious oh, <laughs> just a <laughs> silly gag but it was great no and, and when they went on the date to um, Hard Rock when he's saying, oh, I'm so glad you have a simple name. You're so normal. Big S, little A, little Dan, big D. I'm like, oh, wow. And he just like sits there and she didn't even notice. She just she just got insulted, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, he insults people through the whole movie. I also love that trick camera shot with the uh, the burger and fries, how the camera was moving on the burger and fries as it went to the table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so, so ridiculous. <laughs> that was like Pulp Fiction all over yeah, again. Yeah, right? <laughs> I think Pulp Fiction took from that movie a yeah, little bit on there. Possibly. <laughs> okay, so... Um, let, now this is the point in the uh, in these when we do a kind of a grade. So we'll start with you, Blyze. What would you grade this movie at, and would you remake it? Um, I would be interested to see it remade. I don't know if I necessarily would, just because the whole city dynamic would be really interesting to do now. Mm-hmm. Just because California is or do it a, in Vegas, <laughs> or yeah, do a Vegas, Vegas but, story. Um, I mean, California is just a melting pot of interesting folks now, anyway. So that'd be really interesting to see that whole play on it. Uh, as far as a grade goes, um, probably give it like uh, probably a B. Okay, yeah, Jen. I would agree. A B is pretty solid in the middle. It's not like something that I would. <sighs> want to watch consistently like over I make you yeah. <laughs> um, hey, at least it's not cheers <laughs> that's true thank goodness it is not cheers um, but that's a different story entirely um, I would love to see this type of film be done about the major cities in the US that could be an interesting take. Do the like, like on Netflix? Do a <laughs> Vegas story, a Minnesota story, right? A Seattle story, Miami, Chicago Seattle. story, and have a di- Miami. almost like a Black Mirror, only without the uh, Twilight Zone type thing, right? <laughs> A day in the life of. Are you listening from- to this movie, producers? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would actually watch all those if those came out on Netflix. <laughs> what about you? Um. I would maybe go as high as a B plus. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was really funny uh, and definitely, you know, it's funny. I was just thinking uh, just recently I watched uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, which I never watch movies at home. And so just so totally random that the last two movies I watched at home are Steve Martin movies. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as like a remake, uh, I, I don't know. Like I was saying earlier, I don't know that it could really work today. This kind of silly, you know, slapsticky kind of intellectual at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I mean, I think it could work as a series, possibly. Like I said, like with 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 the Tina Fey series, where those worked, you know. So uh, maybe it could work as a series. I don't know about it as a movie though. I think they would just change it too much. They'd make it just way too PC. It, uh, 
I don't know. I think it would be. Yeah, it probably would be PC. Uh, but I was thinking more of just like a mainstream comedy. Like yeah. it, it would it would turn into uh, like a Kevin Hart thing or, uh, or a okay. Seth Rogen I can thing. See that. Like it wouldn't be. Uh, it wouldn't be as like weird, you know. Mm-hmm. It yeah. wouldn't have as much weirdness packed into it, and that's what really makes it. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a really good point on it. Um, I don't want to see it ever remade. <laughs> I this to me is my number two favorite movie of all time. I love this movie. It's an A plus for me. Um, I think every moment of it is pure brilliance. I've watched the deleted scenes more than most people have seen the movie. Um, you know, when I was in high school, me and my buddy Skeeter would. We watched this for a, a lot. Of, <laughs> this and Wayne's World, those were our movies. Um, but it's, you know, if you take the nostalgia away, I'm still not giving it below an A-. minus. You know, but I, it's just such a, it's a perfect movie for me because it's intelligent, it's funny, it's it just got, it hits all the beats that I want a movie to hit that I haven't seen another movie hit. Mm-hmm. You know, because you don't see people going into Shakespeare. Because, you know, I, I, in high school, I thought I was an intellectual. So, hey, they're talking about Shakespeare. I'm smart like them. I'm not <laughs> smart. I was an idiot. Uh, but it made me feel like, huh, it's just something that I could so relate to. And I would like to find another movie that I can relate to like that. And I don't think I'll ever find another one like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I guess that's our gradings. Um yeah, check out the website, www.iheartgeekshow.com. Um, before we get into all other stuff, let us know how to find your show, Dave. Sure, yeah, you can find Piecing It Together probably anywhere that you're listening to this show, and also uh, at Piecing Pod on social media and our piecingpod.com website. And you're a good follow, by the way. Oh, I have you. been listening to you for a while, and I do give you a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Um, check out our Facebook and our Twitter at iHeartGeekShow and our Instagram and our YouTube. And is there anything else I'm missing? Our uh, smoke signals, I think, now. I think we're doing everything at this point. You um, should get a bad signal made. Oh, that'd be outstanding. <laughs> oh, now I hate you. I'm going to have to do that again. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Dub. I'm Blyce. I'm Jen. And I'm Dave. Keep on geeking on. You've been listening to iHeartGeek. Our Twitter account is at iHeartGeekShow. Hope you enjoyed the show. 